Did you ever stop and wonder if you could be related to everyone with your last name? Just think if you're a Lincoln, how you'd be congratulated if Honest Abe were someone you could claim. To clear up any mystery, just check your family history. Genealogy's the name of the game. Now some ancestors you'll find you want to hide. But most of them will fill your heart with pride. Oh, your family tree, your family tree. Your your family family tree. tree. Check your, your genealogy, find who was who and how who came to be. On your family, 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 family tree. Well, um, welcome to the Genealogy Radio Show, the radio show that's it keeping you in the loop. And this week's show is all about Westmeath. And we have Maeve Keys on the line with us, and she has researched Westmeath. So you're very welcome, Maeve. Thank you. And I'll just start with some queries on Westmeath. How, uh, what interests you in doing this particular county? Uh, Westmeath is actually where I originate from. So I have family there and obviously back ancestors. That's why I had an interest in research in this county. Lovely. So can you tell me about the history and geography that make Westmeath the county it is? Certainly. Um, so County Westmeath is often referred to as its nickname, which is Lake County. And this nickname couldn't be true when applied to Westmeath itself. The county is surrounded by lakes and streams in its 1,840 kilometre squares, which earns it its nickname, the Lake County. Westmeath is an inland county that is situated in the province of Leinster, and it borders the counties of Longford, Meath, Cavan, Roscommon and Offaly. The county comprises of 12 barnies, which although long, no longer used, are um, still listed today, ranging from Brawny to Moycasho. Originally, the county of Westmeath, surprisingly enough, formed part of Meath, a county in which it now borders. It wasn't until 1543, um, during the Meath Act, that Westmeath was established as its own county independent of Meath. The name for the county of Westmeath originates from the word need, which was given appropriately to the county due to its centred geographical location in Ireland. In fact, in one of the first maps in Ireland, Westmeath was shown to be in the middle, which is why it was given this name. Westmeat was said to be the former meeting place for the five ancient provinces of Ireland. The now historical site, called the Hill of Ishnach, is also the burial site of the earth goddess Eru. County Westmeat's history starts back in 1170, when it was invaded by the Normans, which as a result is why the county now contains so many castles and forts. After the Norman invasion, Westmeat was still under the Gaelic Meat Kingdom of Meath, and so it formed the base of a lordship. This lordship was granted by the King Henry II of England to a man named Hugh de Lacey in 1172. During the period of Lacey's lordship, one of the county's oldest castles, which is still there and known as Devlin Castle, was built in 1181. This was where de Lacey lived during his lordship over Westmeath. The next generation of this lordship though failed after it was passed down to his male heir son and his grandson. And as a result of this, it was then given to Lacey's two great granddaughters and split amongst them equally. Maud de Genevieve was granted the liberty of Trim, while her sister Marjorie de Verdun was given the northeastern and western portions of the county, which then went on to become the Royal County of Meath in 1297. The liberty and the royal country of Meath were actually not merged until 1461, remained separate until then. Finally, in 1543, the counties of Meath and Westmeath Act were passed, well, while it was passed officially in 1542 by the government, and this then resulted in 1543, the division of the former county Meath into what is now known as Meath and Westmeath territories today, and so Westmeath was established. After Westmeath became independent of Meath and formed its own county, it was involved in a variety of historical events and suffered great effects due to these events. One that I will 
give as an example, is the 1841 rebellion that Westmead took part in. And as a result, many Irish landowners, as well as normal landowners, lost their land due to this participation. Very interesting, Maeve. Absolutely fascinating stuff. It really has a long history and geographically it, it's very interesting to know the difference between Westmeath and so on. So absolutely really good stuff there. And Maeve, can you tell us about the surnames in the area and stuff and, and things about that? Is there any interesting aspects of that? Of course. So like many other counties previously discussed on the show, Westmeath also has a variety of surnames that have remained present in the county throughout the years. These are names that may have been seen previously in the county or that are still seen presently there today. These surnames could be such as O'Coffey, Brennan, O'Daly, Miladi, and McAuley, which have been seen for centuries in County Westmeath. And for a few of these surnames, they've also been the last names of ruling Gaelic families or for people such as Bardicks, Bardic families in Westmeath. Many of these surnames adopted the prefix of an O before the surname back then. However, today they would be much more commonly seen without the addition of the O. So to begin with, I will discuss the name of O'Coffey. The surname of O'Coffey is common in both Perry as well as County Westmeath. And the name has many variations, such as the variation without the prefix of the O. Coffee spelt like the drink coffee and cushy. The surname of O'Coffey itself is the anglicized version of the Irish name coffee which is spelled C-O-B-H-T-H-A-I-G-H, which is definitely a different way to how we spell it today. The Irish version translates to victorious one. And though the meaning is said to be unsure, many have rumored that it is most likely to be coming from a victorious warrior dating back to the 10th century, which is when the Irish version of the surname first began appearing anyways. There are several distinct and important sets belonging to the name of coffee in medieval times. And one of these included a coffee family that was located in County Westmeath. They were prominently known as a bardic family and bards were known as people who were composing poetry that regarded the stories of significant heroes and legends found in Ireland. They were com commonly found in Ireland during medieval times and times prior to the 19th century. The next name I'll move on to is O'Daly. So the surname of O'Daly is also known as Daly with a prefix of the O and was a common name seen in County Westmeath. O'Daly would be seen more commonly these days without the prefix of the O, and it's rarely seen with the O these days. The name is the anglicized version of the Irish name O'Daly, and the surname O'Daly translates to descendant of Dalach. Although the meaning of Dalach is not entirely known, and we do not know who it refers to, many believe that it comes from the same meaning of the word doll which may be familiar to you as it refers to one of our most well-known government buildings in Ireland. The meaning of the word doll is assembly and the origins of its name come from Westmeath as it was here that a bardic family ruled in the Moyashal and Magar Anderson barony under the clan name of Corka Adam, which translated to Clan Adam. This clan claimed to be a descendant of Son of Nile, the Nine of Hostages. However, this is just a theory and cannot be proven. Although it is an interesting one at that. The next name I will move on to is Brennan. Now the surname Brennan is interesting enough has originated in four different regions of Ireland. And those regions are Kilkenny, Kerry, East Galway, and of course, Westmeath, as we were discussing on the show. The surname comes from three different variations of Irish names. These were O'Brannan, which came from the word Bran, possibly means sorrow, although it has many different meanings. In addition to the names McBrannan and O'Brannan, both coming from the same word of Bran, which translated to Raven. Now lastly, I'll move on to the surname of McAuley. The McAuley surname is frequently seen in County Westmeath. However, its origins are not proven whether they were first seen in Ireland or in Scotland. The anglicized surname of Macaulay in Ireland actually originates from two separate but very distinct surnames in Irish. Macaulay, which translates to son of Ollie, and also Macaulay, which translates to son of Olive. The first Irish surname that I took inspiration from, Macaulay, 
was the surname of a Powell family that ruled in an area of West Meath that is now seen in the West Meath off Leap territory border. They held their power near Ballylock Mo in County West Meath. This was supposedly known as the centre of Macaulay's country, as the English called it. Interestingly, and tellingly enough, Macaulay was also another variation of the surname Macaulay. This may give an indication as to why the English referred to it as this. The Macaulay name is associated most commonly in modern times with Catherine Macaulay, who was a woman who founded the or Mercy Order of the Nuns. This name is still commonly heard in various counties in Ireland through the awards named after her and the Macaulay surname. Very interesting, Maeve. Absolutely fascinating account of some of the interesting pertinent surnames and so relevant for the genealogy radio show. Let's move on a little bit to demographics and population. Can you tell me about some of the population changes and especially in or around the famine? Certainly. So throughout the years, the population in County Westmeath has experienced a wide variety of change due to the national events such as the famine taking place. Like many other counties in Ireland, with of course the exception of Dublin, that was unique. Westmeath has had a rapid decrease in the number of people found living in this county. We begin with the year 1821. Population in Westmeath amounted to 128,819 people living there at the time. And in 1831, this population had increased to over 136,872 people living in County Westmeath. The population in Westmeath in 1841, which was mere four years before the famine occurred, so that an increasing 141,300 people. This population would be viewed as rather large population nowadays. But prior to the famine, population numbers such as these were normal in Ireland. And West, Westmeath was similar to many of the other counties in Ireland at that time. During the Great Famine of 1845 to 1847, the population decreased until it was at 111,407 people in 1851. This was a rapid drop due to the high death rate combined with the sudden immigration that occurred because of the famine. The population seen in 1851, when the effects of the famine were still being seen despite the famine supposedly dying out in 1847, reflects the impact the large majority of Irish migrating to America to escape had on Westmeath in particular. As the years progressed, the population continued to be impacted by the rapid decrease from the famine and a significantly decreased overall population. In 1901, the population reached 62,590 inhabitants in County Westmeath. This was just over half of what it was in 1851 and a vastly different population from the years prior to the famine of 1845. The population in Westmeath surprisingly had an increase in 1981, where they rose against the population last seen in 1901 at just over 62,000, and has from that year remained to grow in size. The population stood at 86,164 in 2011, astonishingly, and managed to grow to 88,770 the last time it was measured properly in 2016. Despite the hit experienced in the famine, the county of Westmeath has managed to finally combat the impact the event has had on its inhabitants. And although it has not reached the same length, the same heights as it had before, it is showing that the people are still growing. That's fascinating, mate. Maeve. And can you tell us something about significant events that have happened in Westmeath uh, over the ages? That people remember and so on, contemporary and so on. What makes it interesting in that way? So, like many other counties in Ireland, Westmeath has an ongoing history. And due to that, there is going to be events in Westmeath's history that are worth remembering. Throughout the establishment of County Westmeath, it has witnessed a variety of events, such as the 1916 Rising in particular. This is also known as the Easter Rising, and, it, and obviously this impacted the entire country of Ireland. Two Westmeath natives played a vital role though, in the events that transpired on that day in particular. Two sisters 
two sisters from the Elliot family, Emily and Ailish, who are originated from Westmeath, were two of the few women that played an active role in the rebellion that took place over 100 years ago in Ireland. There was only one woman that fought in the Easter Rising event. However, Emily and Ailish played a role equally important as those that sacrificed their lives for the country's freedom. The Elliot sisters, born in Townick, County Westmeath, were known for their involvement in Irish nationalism and are still continued to be remembered this way long after their deaths. Emily Elliott, in particular, wanted to volunteer at the General Post Office on the day of the Rising, which we know was a centre hub for the activity that day. However, she was turned away and instead sent to Reese's Chambers, which sat at the opposite side of the street. During her time spent here, Emily and Ailish Ryan, a woman of no relation to her who had accompanied her, were to ensure the details of the Rising were released and to ensure as well, in addition that the men fighting had rations available to them. Ailish, who was Emily's sister, joined the two women the very next day. During the Rising, the women served in the four courts in addition to Father Michael Hall and had to continuously cross O'Connell Street during the ongoing fighting. This was obviously during very dangerous conditions as this is where the majority of the fighting took place and they had to cross multiple times a day provide rations to the men there and to also assist in first aid support to those injured in the battle. On the day of the last, on the last day of the fighting that took place, the women managed to blend into the crowd that had congregated in order to escape being arrested with those that had taken, play, taken part in the rising. The two women were successful and neither were arrested that day. Both women also had an accomplishment prior to the rising of being part, founding members of an organization called Common Amon. For anyone that doesn't know, Common Amon was an Irish Republic women's paramilitary organisation, which otherwise translated to Women's Council in Irish. The Common Amon was formed on the 2nd of April 1914 in Dublin, and in 1916 they became, 16, they became an auxiliary to the Irish volunteers. While the organisation was made illegal in 1923 for a short period of time by the government of the Free State, these two Westmeath natives play a vital role in its history and are forever remembered in Westmeath and in Common Amon for their role. Another historical event that's forever remembered in the history of Westmeath refers to the main town Mullingar. Mullingar is the county town of Westmeath and became it when Westmeath was established in 1543. However, years later in 1597, it was burned down to the ground by Hugh O'Neill and his men. While little information is known about this event or why it occurred, it is still remembered in Westmeath's history for the, for the fact that it was such a weird event to occur. As previously mentioned in the show, Westmeath formed the, the seat for the High Kings in Ireland. This is particularly interesting to note in the history of Westmeath, as the High Kings were of such importance as far back as the 11th century. Prior to Westmeath being established, it was part of the Gaelic Kingdom of Meath, and a particular location, the Hill of Ishnach, was where the High Kings met. Now, this hill is a historical site in Westmeath that is well known, and along with being the burial place for a figure of myth legend, to a day Dunon, in addition to being associated with the festival of Beltan and the religious order of the Druids. However, back in the 11th century, it was known as the High Seat Kings of Ireland. The High Kings existed as a rule of power until the 12th century and they were historical figures that claimed to have lordship over in Ireland. When Westmeath was non-existent, the High Kings had a seat that was known in the Kingdom of Meath. However, it was in Westmeath territory. And it was there at the Hill of Ishnach that they met to discuss laws and come to agreements. Eventually the Hill of Tara, which still belongs to the County of Meath, became the meeting place for the Kings. Yet Ishnach is still held as a spiritual place of importance in Westmeath's ongoing history. Lastly, an important event well remembered in the early history of Westmeath is the county's involvement in the Williamite Wars that took place between the two English monarchs of James II and his successor, William III, in the period of, 18, of 1688 to 1691. Westmeath is a prominently Protestant county at the time, was heavily involved in the wars that occurred not long after the county had been established. And alone, a town Westmeath was particularly impacted by these wars. During the Four-Year War, the town of Atlone was sieged twice by William III's army. 
The first siege took place in 1690, shortly after the defeat of the Jacobite army in the Battle of Boyne. Over 7,500 troops tried to take the town and were met with defences. But a week later and lacking weapons, the Jacobite army had to withdraw as they could not defend any longer. The second siege attempt then occurred the following year, near the end of the war in the summer. The Jacobite armies drew protection around the town of Atlone, and William III's armies opened assault on the 20th of June. But by the 29th of June, James II's armies had to call for reinforcements. And by the end of the 30th of June, the Jacobite armies had to retreat, and the Williamites drew victory on Atlone again. Fascinating. That was a lovely, lovely show on Westmeath with plenty of sources and information and so on. A really interesting account. Thank you very much. And that was with Maeve Keyes. And I really enjoyed that. Now, thank you for listening to the Genealogy Radio Show. Our show airs live on Thursdays at four o'clock and then it goes out podcast for Sundays. It's repeated on Sunday as well. And we'd like to thank you for listening. I'll be giving out events and so on in the next couple of weeks of what's happening. Um, we're, we're starting to get back into uh, a bit of opening up and all sorts of things. So we're looking forward to sharing that information with you. So that's all for now. And thanks for listening. Did you ever stop and wonder if you could be related to everyone with your last name? Just think if you're a Lincoln, how you'd be congratulated if Honest Abe were someone you could claim. To clear up any mystery, just check your family history. Genealogy is the name of the game. Now some ancestors you'll find you want to hide. But most of them will fill your heart with pride. Oh, your family tree, your family tree, check your genealogy, find who was who and how who came to be. Oh, your family, 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 family tree.